This is Rich Harrington, and I am just finishing up the last day of a vacation. What I'd like to show you is the thought process as I go ahead and develop an image from this trip. Now, I haven't done any work ahead of time. I've just picked out the images I'm going to work with, and I want to show you a couple of techniques, how I like to combine things. This is just going to give you a quick look in my head and sort of the thought process to working with images. I clicked on Mini Bridge, and I'm going to navigate out to my images. I dropped them on my desktop just to make them easy to find. And what you see here is I've got three photos, essentially a series in a high dynamic range image. Now these particular images were chosen and were actually handheld. So I put the camera into continuous high mode. I took a breath, exhaled, and fired off the three shots, but there was no tripod, so they're definitely going to need some alignment. Let's go ahead and actually process those. And we can go ahead and choose Photoshop merged HDR Pro. I'm going to do that to get a wider dynamic range of the highlights, shadows, and midtones as we pull this image together. It was a very bright sunny day and it's just a tad bright, so we'll go ahead and process those down a little bit darker to really bring out the contrast. It's currently downloading lens profiles, so we can use the lens correction. There we go. All the images are loaded, and it's done a good job of auto-aligning. We'll tell it to remove any ghosts if needed, deal with the wind. And what we're going to do here is just play with the contrast. Let's go ahead and bump up the detail a bit. We'll zoom in here. What I'm looking for is a nice contrasty black and white. And we'll go ahead and play with the highlights and shadows a little. Get the color nice and rich actually pull vibrance down and that's nice we're getting the saturation of the pink while the other colors drop out a little bit play with exposure and the gamma to adjust the overall balance between the lights and the darks there we go that's nice and let's just adjust that glow to really pop those edges looking good I'll come on over to the curve here and just put a little adjustment in the middle popping the highlights and lowering the shadows. That looks pretty good. And when satisfied, I'll click OK to create the HDR image. You see that these particular images were two stops apart. I shot these on a Nikon D7000, which does support HDR, but only has a three range image. There's the normal image, and now it's going to go ahead and convert and create the HDR version. There we go. That's looking good. We got a nice interest of contrast there. Now what I want to do is go over to the history panel for a second and I'm going to go ahead and create a new copy based on the current state. So now I have two documents and it'll make it easier to merge them later. Let's go ahead and make an adjustment here. We're going to use a black and white adjustment to get a little contrast in there. And what I'm going to do is select the pink and really pull that. There we go. We'll change the blending mode of that to lighten. And you see there as we pull, that individual slider comes through. So let's minimize the yellows and the greens. And what I want to leave behind is a little bit of the blue and the pink, giving this sort of a hand-painted look. So we'll pull the blues down a bit. Take the cyans. There we go. That's getting the sky. It's looking pretty good. And we'll push the magentas for the pink. And if I toggle that off and on, you see how we're doing a quick sort of spot color effect. That's looking pretty good. What I want to do is get a little bit out here in the tree here, so we'll add a secondary selection. Let's take the quick selection tool. And we'll just make a gross selection there get a pretty large area, pull out the trees a little bit there, just holding down the option key as I drag to subtract. There we go. Looks pretty good. And we'll add a hue saturation adjustment and just pull the saturation down a little bit on the tree. That looks pretty good. Because that's an adjustment, we can go ahead and grab our brush, and if we just paint with the white brush there, we could paint in any problem areas that we didn't want color left on, such as the pole here. I could take that down a little bit. There we go. And that's just a nice quick way to go in and touch up any problem areas that were affected 
by the black and white adjustment layer unintentionally. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Just take a little bit more color out of that tree in the brush there. Quick brush strokes are nice. There we go. And that looks how I want it. Good. So we've got the pink left behind and a little bit of the blue in the sky. And we've just brushed out the area of the trees and the pole so those aren't left. Now this is looking pretty good. What I want to do next is add a crop. So I'm going to press C for crop. And notice up here we can choose a preset. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the 4x6, but actually flip that so it's a wider image than it is tall. And let's just double click here. And we'll name that layer bike and drag out our initial crop. There we go. Looks pretty good. We can choose to hide and press return and it goes ahead and crops that image and resizes it at the same time. Now if we go ahead and try to nudge this you'll see because we chose hide the full original image is there so you can slightly recompose the photo as needed with just a little bit of a nudge. That's looking pretty good. I want to put another black and white adjustment layer on here. And we'll put that to the top. And we're just going to use the Move tool and then press Shift Plus to cycle through our modes. And you see as we do that, it applies the effect in a different manner. And what I'm just trying to do there is get a little bit of a gentle effect to grunge it up a little bit. In this case, making the blacks pop a little more. And I like that. What we could do now is add a new layer and I'm going to choose select color range and just click on the pink here and start to shift click a little bit and what you'll see there is you can go ahead and just make a basic selection so with the shift key we can continue to add and pick up a little bit more and fuzz that out as needed that looks pretty good I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then we'll go ahead with the marquee tool selected and refine that edge and this lets us really improve things like the radius there. If we want a gentler transition, I could choose Smart Radius. And I'm just trying to go ahead and smooth that out and pick up the areas that I want to pop. That's looking pretty good. Let's feather that so it's a gentler transition. Looks good. Tighten the radius up a little. And put a little contrast in. That looks nice. I'll click OK and we're going to add another adjustment here. First we're going to go ahead and do a curves adjustment just on that area and what we want to do there is really make that pop so I'm pulling that pink down so it gets nice and rich. And you see there how it was a nice isolated adjustment. I can go ahead and command click to load that selection again pop on over here and choose another adjustment in this case we'll do vibrance and we'll just further bring up the color and that pink a little bit there, getting a nice sort of oversaturated look. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to bounce on over to my original image here, and I can just do a quick comparison. Looks good. Let's do select all and choose copy merged. There we go. Select all and copy merged. And we can now make a new layer and paste. And you see it puts a flattened copy there. I'm actually going to make a new document and paste that in so I can do a little bit of filtration over here. Let's call up the Actions panel. And in our Actions, we've got tons to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and click. I've got a few extra ones here, but I'm going to choose this Lab Black and White technique. Load that in. And we'll just select that and press Play. There we go. We're just adjusting the hue saturation here. Push that a little bit pinker. Looks good. And we'll go ahead and flatten that. And then let's go ahead and load in a couple of other looks here. We'll choose the default image effects, which is included with Photoshop. And we'll choose the aged photo action and press play. That's going to age it down a little bit. Got a nice bloom there and let's choose the soft focus. There we go. That's very pretty. Select all and copy merged. Come on back to our document and paste. And now with the move tool selected we could just do shift plus to adjust our blending modes. And you see as we step through we get a different look. 
I kind of like that there, except I want to tone down the effect a little bit on the bike, so we'll just load that selection from down below, select the layer here and add a layer mask, and now we can invert that layer mask and just lower the overall opacity of the layer. Looking pretty good. We just want to finish this out with a border. Let's go ahead and save our work. Let's go ahead and finish this out with a border. I'm going to go ahead and under the history panel here, create another new document so I can work with a clean copy here. We'll flatten this image down. And from the actions panel, I am going to go ahead and load the frames actions. And I am going to take advantage and just use photo corners here and press play to create the border. So there you have it, sort of an aged photo look, just a fun playing with the image we had here. Have a little bit of a hand-painted look with the colors coming through in the older photo. To compare it to the starting point, that's where we came. This is where we went. So just a quick, fun distortion there, and I'm happy with how that turned out.